Welcome, friends. Today's presentation is not so much a story, but a little bit of Lovecraftian horror history. The Necronomicon is an ancient book of magic that threads a number of Lovecraft's popular stories together, including The Dunwich Horror, The Call of Cthulhu, and At the Mountains of Madness. This powerful symbol of horror literature epitomizes the allure and danger of forbidden knowledge. First penned by Lovecraft in the early 20th century, this fictional grimoire has transcended its literary origins to become a cultural phenomenon. From the chilling stories of the Cthulhu mythos to the countless references in movies, TV shows, and games, the Necronomicon has captivated imaginations for nearly a century. What you're about to hear is a short story written in 1927 that is a fictional historical account of the origins, translations, and various copies of the Necronomicon. It was never published during Lovecraft's lifetime. The document is presented as a scholarly article or preface providing background information on the book and its sinister history. The Necronomicon has a history of driving its readers to insanity. Let's hope Lovecraft's history of the book doesn't take us quite that far. So get a deep grip on your sanity and we'll see you on the other side. History of the Necronomicon by H.P. Lovecraft Original title, Al-Azif Azif being the word used by Arabs to designate that nocturnal sound made by insects supposed to be the howling of demons. Composed by Abdul al Hazred, a mad poet of Sana'a in Yemen, who is said to have flourished during the period of the Umayyad Caliphs, circa 700 AD. He visited the ruins of Babylon and the subterranean secrets of Memphis and spent ten years alone in the great southern desert of Arabia. The Rub al Kali, or empty space of the ancients, and Dana, or crimson desert of the modern Arabs, which is held to be inhabited by protective evil spirits and monsters of death. Of this desert, many strange and unbelievable marvels are told by those who pretend to have penetrated it. In his last years, Al Hazred dwelt in Damascus, where the Necronomicon Al Azif was written, and of his final death or disappearance, 738 AD, many terrible and conflicting things are told. He is said by Ibn Khalikan, 12th century biographer, to have been seized by an invisible monster in broad daylight and devoured horribly before a large number of fright-frozen witnesses. Of his madness, many things are told. He claimed to have seen fabulous Irem, or City of Pillars, and to have found beneath the ruins of a certain nameless desert town the shocking annals and secrets of a race older than mankind. He was only an indifferent Muslim, worshipping unknown entities whom he called Yag Sothoth and Cthulhu. In AD 950, the Azif which had gained a considerable though surreptitious circulation amongst the philosophers of the age was secretly translated into Greek by Theodorus Philetus of Constantinople under the title Necronomicon. For a century, it impelled certain experimenters to terrible attempts when it was suppressed and burnt by the patriarch Michael. After this, it is only heard of furtively, but 1228, 
Olaus Wormius made a Latin translation later in the Middle Ages, and the Latin text was printed twice, once in the 15th century in black letter, evidently in Germany, and once in the 17th, probably Spanish, both editions being without identifying marks and located as to time and place by internal typographical evidence only. The work, both Latin and Greek, was banned by Pope Gregory IX in 1232, shortly after its Latin translation, which called attention to it. The Arabic original was lost as early as Wormius' time, as indicated by his prefatory note, and no sight of the Greek copy, which was printed in Italy between 1500 and 1550, has been reported since the burning of a certain Salem man's library in 1692. An English translation made by Dr. D was never printed and exists only in fragments recovered from the original manuscript. Of the Latin texts now existing, one, 15th century, is known to be in the British Museum under lock and key, while another, 17th century, is in the Bibliothèque Nationale at Paris. A 17th century edition is in the Widener Library at Harvard and in the Library of Miskatonic University at Arkham, also in the Library of the University of Buenos Aires. Numerous other copies probably exist in secret and a 15th century one is persistently rumored to form part of the collection of a celebrated American millionaire. A still vaguer rumor credits the preservation of a 16th century Greek text in the Salem family of Pickman. But if it was so preserved, it vanished with the artist R.U. Pickman, who disappeared early in 1926. The book is rigidly suppressed by the authorities of most countries and by all branches of organized ecclesiasticism. Reading leads to terrible consequences. It was from rumors of this book, of which relatively few of the general public know, that R.W. Chambers is said to have derived the idea of his early novel, The King in Yellow. Chronology Alazif, written circa 730 AD, at Damascus by Abdul al Hazrid. Translated to Greek 950 AD as Necronomicon by Theodorus Philetus. Burnt by Patriarch Michael 1050, i.e., Greek text, Arabic text now lost. Olaus translates Greek to Latin, 1228. 1232, Latin edition and Greek suppressed by Pope Gregory IX. Somewhere in the 1400s, black letter printed edition from Germany. Somewhere during the 1500s, Greek text printed in Italy. Somewhere in the 1600s, Spanish reprint of Latin text. And so ends the document of the history of the Necronomicon. Holy moly, as dense as all that was with facts and tidbits, there's so much Necronomicon info out there that I think that whole video could be redone with a completely different set of facts. There's a series of horror movies by Sam Raimi that started with the hilarious and frightening Evil Dead and continued on through a number of movies and then a TV series which has a Necronomicon at the core of its story. There are a number of differences though, such as Lovecraft's version being written by the mad Arab al Hazred, and Raimi's was said to be written by Sumerian scribes. Lovecraft's describes ancient forbidden knowledge, including lore of the great old ones, dark rituals and prophecies, 
while Raimi's contains spells and incantations that can summon demons, resurrect the dead, and even open portals to other dimensions. Raimi's is also bound in human flesh and written in human blood. Yikes. But these are some of the things that make Simon's Necronomicon interesting, as it includes ideas from all of the above. It has the added benefit in that in the modern world, you can summon and make manifest this Necronomicon at your house in probably two days or less via the properly formed Amazon incantations. If you really want something to think about, there's an idea you will see in certain occult literature that the gods live through time backwards. So maybe there is only one Necronomicon at the gooey center of reality. Who knows, hmm? Either way, you've got a fat dose of Necronomicon, and I've left you plenty of rabbit holes to go down should you dare to. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our related Lovecraft info vision stories right now. We have The Call of Cthulhu, The Rats in the Walls, my favorite, and The Festival, all available on the channel now. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time we can crack open the Dusty Show! <laughs>